going to be talking again, part two, about a world possessed by demons. Again, it's a question mark for a lot of people, but I, I want to read a passage of Scripture, and then I want to take five minutes or so, if it's all right, and go over some of the things that we hit on on part one. Because, you know, from week to week, we get forget, we're forgetful sometimes. And so this will add, I think, a little bit to what we're going to be speaking about today. Turn with me in your Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy 18. Now, there's a few verses here, a lot of them, but I'm just going to try to focus on verses 9 through 13. Deuteronomy chapter 18, and we're going to read 9 through 13. See what the Bible says. Notice, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after thee, what's the word? abominations of those nations. God says, be sure. Now, notice he's calling this to begin with what? Before we get into it and really see what he's talking about, he's calling it an abomination. So God says it's not good when we go to that land to inherit it. I don't want you taking these things with you. Now, notice verse 10. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Very, very sad, but we realize not only were the heathen and the pagans doing this practice of fire and making the children go through it, but God's people finally came to the point because they dilly-dallied around with the heathen, with the world, with Babylon, as it were, and they began to accept these heathen practices. They've set a nice big fire. A lot of people say they walked through it here because one translation said that they leaped over it. And if they got, you know, if they leaped over it, oh, everything was well. They've got all kind of things that were, you know, they gave them high ranking and they were looked upon as special and holy. They didn't really have to do anything beyond that point. But if they got burnt, then they were, they were killed. How, why would God's people be involved in anything like this when the Bible speaks against it and says it's abomination and God has warned us against this? Notice this. And that uses, you no know, divination or observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. God says don't have anything to do with what? Enchanters, or witches, or anything like that, observer of time. Now notice it says verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or wizard, or necromancer. Notice this. For all that do these things, listen, all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Verse 13, we'll read that. It says, but thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. So God goes through a list here, doesn't he? And notice it basically has to do with what? Demons, evil spirits, necromancy. Those who claim to have touch with those maybe who have died has touch with evil spirits. Now, a lot of people say, well, where do evil spirits come from? Well, certainly, as you look at the Word of God, if we had time to go in there, in the beginning, these evil spirits were good angels. Does that make sense? They were good, good angels. That they chose to follow after what? Lucifer, and they became evil spirits doing his bidding. Man, we think about the battle that we have. We need Jesus, don't we? We need the Holy Spirit with us because they're, they're more than from what we can handle on our own. So God then is saying in his word, just to begin with, where people disagree about there being evil spirits and, you know, uh, worshiping devils and so on and so forth. They're saying, God's going in and making a list here to say, we go into the land to possess it. Don't take this stuff with you. So evidently, God's people have been dabbling in it. There may be some of God's people today that are dabbling in some of these things. They may be dabbling and they want to have someone to read their palm. They may want to go and look into the glass ball. They need somebody to tell them whether they're going to live or die. And they go to a wizard. They go to someone else rather than going to God. And God rebukes that. You know, why would it that you would go to right, some kind of an idol? You go to the, the enemy itself. Bells above, the Bible talks about, rather than come to me. That must really be intriguing to God to say, you could come to me. I know everything that's going on. And you can ask me, and I'm going to help you with it. But you would rather go to Beelzebub. You'd rather go to the devil and ask or an evil spirit of what's going to happen. Remember, when we do that, the devil is always a liar. The evil spirits are always a liar. They will tell you certain things that maybe will come to pass. They'll give you enough of the goodies so that you want to stay with them. But bottom line, they're going to certainly 
cut it, uh, cut you off, and certainly try to destroy you. Revelation 18, verse 23. And the light of the candle shall shine what? No more where? At all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more. And all in thee, for the merchants have grown, notice this, of the great men of the earth, for they, no, by, what is it, thy sorceries were all nations, what? This is what you want to look at. The last line on it says, not, not, what happens here? The great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, or by the work of the devil, by the, ev- the evil practices, the evil spirits, the miracles that are performed, notice this, all nations deceived. So before Jesus comes, this is why this is important. Easy to leave it alone, but we can't leave it alone. Because when I read this, something bothers me inside. I hope it bothers you. I hope it bothers you to say all nations will be deceived by his sorceries, by his evil practices, by witchcraft. He's going to deceive. And notice it says all, and we have to kind of pinpoint down how far does this go? Is it possible that God's people or some of the children or professed Christians can be deceived? I hear some people say, I can't be deceived. You already deceived. Does that make sense? When you say you can't be deceived, you're already deceived. Only by the grace of God, we would say, right? If it possible, the very elect would be deceived. Only by the grace of God and grace of God only will I not be deceived. God's great. We need that. The Bible said all nations, and so that kind of gets me to think of it. For by thy sorceries they were deceived. Well, God has answers in here. He doesn't want the world to be deceived, does he? And so somebody or bodies, each one, each one need to understand this and be able to share with other ones that the warfare is going on because we fight not against principalities and powers of the earth, but what? Powers in high places, much bigger, stronger than we are. We need help. It's a real battle that's going on for your very life. You're here every day of your life, only a miracle from heaven. You are here. We owe that to God, Absolutely. Revelation 16, just turn back a page real quick. Revelation chapter 16. Just to give you an idea, remember, for those who say, uh, I don't believe that there's evil spirits. I don't believe I have to worry about that. There's no devil. There's no evil angels. Why is it the Bible, and again, we're just picking out a few. We could do dozens of passages of Scripture that, that indicate clearly and plainly that there are evil spirits. Is that true? Absolutely. Notice with me there, Revelation 16. This is familiar. Verse 13. Yeah. Bible says, and I said, I saw three unclean what? Unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Notice this, verse 14, for they are the spirits of, oh, spirits of what? The spirits of devils, and notice what they're doing. They're spirits of devils, and they're working what? The Bible said they're working, I see, miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world. To do what? To gather them to battle the great day of God Almighty. Right on down to the end. Evil spirits are going to be working until Jesus shall come. Until he puts an end to it. We're going to have to always fight this fight, you see, of of faith. We're going to have to continue on down and do not give up. Because the devil's not going to give up until he's put out of commission. Notice what it says. These things here are evil spirits. They're spirits of what? Of devils, the Bible says. That's pretty heavy duty when you think about it. Let's do one more. Revelation 18, I'm already there, I think. Revelation 18, verse 2. The Bible says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is what? Is fallen, is fallen. Notice this. Has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So over and over in Scripture, you see that there's something about the devil here talking about evil spirits that's working in the world. So the question could be legitimately asked, are there any evil spirits uh, around today? Hmm? Do they really exist? According to the Bible, just a few right there. And we're not getting in the New Testament. We're not getting into where Jesus was dealing with them, where the disciples were dealing with them. Actual cases of demon possession and how the mind. There's, there's ways in which the devil can come in and take control of your mind. He doesn't want to do it into the... Let's be careful. 
to the very point that you end up in an institution. He'd rather be, affect your mind just enough he can make you do what he wants you to do without seeming you're off of the deep end. That people will think that you're all right. Oh, did, is that, that, I, mean, is it, I want to add up to where he doesn't want us in an institution. But he wants to be able to use our mind where other people will say, well, wait a minute here. He's bringing something I hadn't thought about before. Well, it's against Scripture, but it seemed like it might be right, you know, because it might match your lifestyle or my lifestyle here. If there are evil spirits, what part do they play? What are they allowed to do? Is God in control of those evil spirits? Why does he let them go like he lets them go and things happen like they happen when there's all kind of death and disease and destruction and sickness going on? Is God really in charge? Can they really control man's mind? Can they really control man's mind is a question we need to ask ourselves because everyone that's, we want to say, in the right mind, the devil wants your mind. He doesn't want you in your own right mind. He wants his mind to be in you, which Jesus said, I want to have what? Let this mind be in you, which was also in, in Christ Jesus. You remember? You see how the devil is the counterfeit? You see, for every truth that God has, the enemy has what? He has a counterfeit. For every truth, a counterfeit. Because God said, I want you to have, Jesus said, I want you to have my mind. The devil sits around and says, oh, that's a good idea. Well, then I'm going to have a group of people that's going to have my mind. God says on one side over here, there's going to be an image to the beast over here. You know, oh, well, yeah, image to the beast. That's one side over here. God says, I want you created in my image. Huh. So it goes back and forth. God says, God says, I have a day that I've made. And the enemy says, now I've got a day. And so how are we going to sort all this out? God says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You're going to have to come in and sup with me. The devil says, come on, the door's open. Come on in. And when you come on in, I'm going to have some good things for you. He lures you in, he lies to you, and then he pulls the rug. Keep this in mind. The battle rages. It's not just spending time on this. The battle is real and rages because you're going through it every day of your life through tests and trials and disease and sickness and loss of loved ones and uh, loss of property and, and everything. You, everything you turn around, the devil is chiseling away. Just seem chiseling, taking a chisel, chiseling with this, chiseling with that. You take, have a happy moment and the devil comes and tries to steal the happy moment. You go to church and you get, you're lifted up and you feel like you've been to church, that you've had church. That you feel good when you're, and you can't get out of the front door until somebody ruins it. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody says something. Somebody does something. I guess if I have to, if I'm feeling good, I'd run out the door. You know what I'm talking about. Don't, 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 let, the devil, don't let the devil be a robber and a thief like he is. Don't let him take your joy. Be happy in the Lord. With all that's happening and going on in the world today, is it possible that the enemy is playing a bigger part in things than we actually thought? I mentioned before that you know horrible crimes, horrible things have taken place in this world over the centuries. Right now, as we live right now, horrible cover-up of crimes, mass murder and shootings and all kind of killings going on right here. And a lot of times, you've heard it said, they will say what when they're questioned? Something told me to do it. And you see, yeah, and you see them a lot of times, well, some people walk down the street or whatever they might be, and they're having the biggest conversation with themselves. Not trying to run anything down or laugh about anything. I'm trying to write, they're talking to somebody. They're talking to somebody, and is it possible that they can communicate with somebody else, the enemy? Yes, it is. Absolutely. They're talking. What do you think the enemy's doing? Wants them to do something good or something bad? Something bad always. Satan can and will control the minds of every individual who does not commit that mind to Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it again a little bit later on. I'm going to have to say it again because unless your mind is 100% committed to Jesus Christ, I stand here today and say based on God's word that the enemy will take your mind before it's over. 
We live in a world full of demons. And this is building up to say, let me say, get into the word of God to say we have a battle to fight. We need Jesus. I want to pray for you right now, and I want you to be praying for me, will you? This, this is a big subject, and we need to understand it. Let's pray together, shall we? Loving Father in heaven, we again thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you for your word. We pray your Holy Spirit take the mess that I know that I just made, but you'll straighten it out in the hearts and the ears of your children today. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for these beautiful truths. It gives us a peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen.